welcome to the 24th, 24th lecture of graph theory. In the last class, we had introduced the class of perfect graphs and we had considered several examples of perfect graphs. First was bipartite graphs and complements of bipartite graphs. Then we considered line graphs of bipartite graphs complements of line graphs of bipartite graphs and comparability graph, their complements called comparability graphs. And finally, we, we had reached interval graphs. So, we introduced uh, the class of interval graphs uh, as the intersection graph of a family of intervals on the rail line. That means, for each vertex, we will be able to assign an interval on this rail line such that uh, two vertices are adjacent if and only if the corresponding intervals intersect. So, if uh, for a given graph such an interval representation is possible, if we can find intervals on the real line for each vertex of the graph such that two vertices are adjacent if and only if the corresponding intervals intersect, then we say that the given graph is an interval graph. Uh, uh, these interval graphs are also very useful graphs uh, in several practical applications it arises. So, of course, so they are uh, defined because of their usefulness and now, but our intention here is to verify that these interval graphs are in also perfect graphs. That means, any interval graph is a perfect graph. To remind you what was a perfect graph? Uh, it meant uh, for the graph and each of its induced subgraphs, not only for the graphs, we have to also consider in every induced subgraph for the graph, uh, the uh, usual inequality chi of g greater than equal to omega of g. That means, the chromatic number greater than equal to the clique number should become equality. That means, chromatic number has to be equal to the clique number, not only for the graph, but also for the for each induced subgraph of the graph. Then we have explained why probably this slightly uh, 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 strange definition arises, because otherwise uh, the question was not very relevant, right. That is why we had to introduce this induced subgraph thing also in it in the definition. And then we verified in most of these cases induced subgraph also for instance in, in the case of bipartite graph, line graphs. In most of the cases we have seen uh, the induced subgraph also belong to that class. Therefore, uh, as long as we prove that the clique number is equal to chromatic number was in enough. It is not true in every case because some cases uh, the general properties may not the, that uh, is there for the this entire graph may not hold for an induced subgraph. Therefore, uh, it is not enough to uh, always consider just for the entire graph the chromatic number and the clique number. Some cases we have to go into the induced subgraph and prove it. Here again interval graphs have this property that if you consider an induced subgraph, it is again an interval graph. Therefore, we do not have to worry too much about the uh, uh, this special property uh, being satisfied for every induced subgraph. So, uh, we will just prove that the chromatic number is equal to clique number for a, any interval graph g. This is our next team. So, how do we show this thing? So, we, we will consider this interval representation because it is an interval graph we have an interval representation. Uh, so, let us say this is the real line and uh, see the I will mark an interval like this. So, this can be typically it's okay. this this can be the interval representation of some graph. Now, what we do is we search from the the left end that means, we can come from this side and we find out the first interval graph that opens. 
so we are going to prove our intention here is to prove that the chromatic number of this graph is equal to the clique number as we all know this is always true for any graph greater than or equal to omega of g now it is enough that if, if enough if we find a coloring of this graph such that the number of colors used in the coloring is equal to the clique number this is what we are going to do that will imply that this is in equality. So, for that matter uh, so therefore, we are going to color the graph. So, how am I going to color? So, first I will search for the first opening interval, the first interval, the first starting interval. It does not mean that uh, the interval which starts first should end first that is not necessary. So, we just find out the starting interval and give it a color and then uh, we look at the second starting interval and we will give it a color uh, in the greedy way. What is the greedy way? We will look at its neighbors which are already colored. Uh, other than uh, we have to avoid those colors of case. Now, among the remaining colors that we have already used, uh, we will if anything is left, we will take the lowest numbered color, lowest color. Otherwise, we will go for the next color that is the plan. That means, we will we will reuse a color if uh, uh, possible. Otherwise, if only in the case of uh, uh, a reusing not possible then only we will take a new color then only we will take a new color. So, this is the greedy strategy we are very familiar with it in the case of uh, in the earlier when we introduced the coloring we had introduced this concept of coloring number degeneracy all those things right we, we consider a certain ordering uh, and that is how we in initially proved that maximum degree plus 1 is a uh, upper bound for the chromatic number and then later we told that in many graphs it can be much smaller because if we consider the correct ordering uh, we may see that the, the ordering may allow us uh, such an arrangement in such a way that for instance whenever see uh, a vertex it is lower numbered vertices with respect to that ordering may be much smaller than its maximum degree that is that is what that plus 1 was the uh, so, that was the degeneracy that plus 1 was the required number of colors we called it coloring number right. So, the same strategy here, but here see how it works because you know in those cases we were not guaranteed that we will get an optimum coloring. The number of colors that we end up using may not be optimum, but uh, here it will become optimum why because because of this reason. Uh, so, we are uh, taking this, this is the ordering, ordering we are considering is with respect to the, the arrangement of the intervals, the left hand points and the, we will consider the intervals or the vertices in the uh, order in which the left end points of their intervals appear when we scan from left to right and on the real line. So, this is considered first then this is considered and uh, of course, the coloring strategy is greedy strategy and maybe third we will consider like this. Now, we want to say that. So, the when we color the ith interval, suppose we are coloring the ith interval. So, okay, we will in the entire process might have used say k colors in this way. Now, there will be an interval say the ith interval ith vertex which got the color k right this got the color k. How did it get the color k? Because there were uh, k minus 1 neighbors of it which were colored differently and we had to take the kth color that is why it happened. You see it starts here the ith interval starts here and it had to be given the kth color this interval. So, the reason so now how will their neighbors be because all the neighbors which are already colored started from somewhere here before this right see some somewhere here right because we are scanning from left to right. So, therefore, uh, we will see this neighbors of this starting from here, but if a neighbor started from here and ended here itself then it will 
So, a vertex started somewhere before this and ended before it then it would not be a neighbor of it because these intervals are not intersecting right. So, only a interval which intersects with it will be a neighbor. So, any neighbor of this which is already colored which start before this but end after this after this point right maybe it can end here or it can even go further. But the key point is all those intervals corresponding to the neighbors of this which are already colored already colored neighbors of this has to pass through this right point which I have marked right right. So, because they start before and have to end before because it is a neighbor of it right. So, if all of them goes through this point uh, then what does it mean they all intersect with each other pairwise intersect because this point is in all of them. So, it is a clique and uh, this ith vertex itself is part of the clique. So, that means we have this k minus 1 plus 1 vertices uh, belonging to a clique corresponding to this red point right. So, we have a k clique there and uh, by assumption we have only used k colors what does it mean. So, we have uh, colored the interval graph using k colors on the other hand there exists a k clique in the interval graph. So, the chromatic uh, the clique number can only be bigger than this k right because there is a k clique uh, bigger it can be bigger than equal to, but it cannot be big strictly bigger because uh, if it is strictly bigger we will need more colors also, but we are saying that we have used only k colors. So, how is it possible? So, we conclude that k is indeed the chromatic number also the k the chromatic number is indeed the clique number also that we get that uh, chi of g equal to k equal to the clique number right. This is what we get this is what we wanted. Now, for an interval graph its chromatic number and clique number is equal any induced subgraph of the interval graph is again an interval graph there also the chromatic number and clique number will be equal therefore, interval graphs are perfect graphs. So, this is uh, the reason why interval graphs are perfect graphs. Now, of case as we were checking in all the previous cases whether the, the whenever we considered a class we also considered whether they complement the class of the complement graphs was also perfect. Here also we will do that. What about co interval graphs? What do we mean by co interval graphs? Just that it is a co interval graph is a graph whose complement is an interval graph that is all. So, now uh, we know how to check this. How do we do that? We just have to uh, consider the independent set of the coin uh, interval graph because this independent set of the complement interval graph will become the clique number of the co interval graph we are considering, right? Uh, like we have done it before also in the case of all the previous classes, we have done this thing. Alpha of uh, its complement will be the clique number of the original, right? The the, the co interval graph we are considering. Now, uh, we have to show what will be the chromatic number uh, convert to in the complement interval graph. The chromatic number is a covering using uh, independent set. So, it will become a covering using the cliques in the corresponding complement graph that means in the interval graph. So, that is called a clique cover number in the complement the chromatic number becomes the clique cover number uh, because we are trying to cover using cliques all the vertices right. We want to cover all the vertices of the graph using as small a number of cliques that is what uh, the clique cover number. And then what about we want to show that for an interval graph the clique cover number is equal to alpha the independent independence number that is the stability number the biggest independent set size. You know if you show this thing for all the induced subgraph also this will be true which means that for the complement the chi of g is equal to omega of, uh, the omega of g that the chromatic number and the clique number will be equal and for all the induced subgraphs. So, let us show that for the interval graph uh, this is true that means omega uh, sorry the clique cover number is equal to the uh, independent set. This is the method we again consider our real line. And then we we first consider we consider the interval this time we consider the interval which starts sorry which ends 
first we scan from left to right we look at the interval corresponding to the earliest closing brace that means which the interval which crosses closes first so there can be several things which starts before this thing but this is the one which uh, closes first it doesn't mean that it is an interval corresponding to the earliest starting bracket it can be see this may be that right this may be that so all these things may go further it may be this may go like this this may go like this or this may go like this so so just that we are considering the interval uh, with the um, earliest closing brace the first closing brace that interval we will add to our independent set right we will add to our independent set that interval this is what we are going to do first right and now what we do we will uh, we will remove all the vertices which pass through this point which cross through this point because this is the first closing brace anything which starts before this thing has to go further right because they don't close before or before this so they all have to at least touch this or go further so they this point this point p1 we can we can define a we we define a the clique corresponding to this point it means all the intervals which cross through this point uh, has to be adjacent to each other in the graph that means they they intersect their intervals touch uh, intervals intersect with each other therefore uh, they correspond to a clique in the graph right so therefore that clique we can we can collect let's call it k1 the first clique so that we we put one in the independent set this is an independent set we are forming uh, this namely this interval which ended there uh, and then we also collected all the intervals which pass through that that correspond to a clique and that uh, is added to the clique cover so we are going to construct a independent set as well as a clique cover for the graph side by side so one in the independent set one vertex in the independent set a clique in the clique cover number like that we keep adding and show that by the end of the procedure uh, we will get an independent set uh, and a collection of cliques so that uh, the cardinality of both the sets are equal that means the number of cliques in the clique cover will be equal to the number of vertices in the independent set and uh, this collection of cliques will cover the graph and moreover the we will show that uh, yeah uh right cover the graph that's sort because that is enough why because as we as we see the clique cover number has to be always greater than equal to the independent set and uh, what we are demonstrating is a clique cover whose cardinality is equal to the cardinality of some independent set so the maximum independent set cannot be more than this right because uh, if it is more than the clique cover we will not get a clique cover of a, of this cardinality right because the clique cover number has to be at least as much as the cardinality of any independent set in particular greater than or equal to the maximum independent set if we demonstrate a clique cover uh, whose cardinality is only equal to some independent set that's enough that means that that the independent set we have got is also a maximum independent set right that's what we are going to do so we got one here after that we remove uh, this uh, interval as well as all the uh, intervals corresponding to this clique so we just remove it that means now uh, we will see after the removal we will see a uh, some intervals are removed right now some so now the remaining intervals will be seen here right as if nothing has happened because again it's an interval graph after removing something just that we removed uh, one in one vertex and added it to our independent set and uh, removed all the cliques uh, all the vertices which pass through uh, the end point the closing end point of that interval uh, which formed a clique right so that was added to the clique cover now the same thing we will do from the remaining interval graph we uh pick up the first closing brace maybe this is the first closing brace and it may correspond to this right and then we will uh add this to our independent set Th this will be the second vertex in the independent set and then corresponding to this point we again we can collect all the vertices which pass through this in particular everything which starts before this thing has to pass through this point this will correspond to a clique and this clique is added to the independent set now you remove all the vertices now right so uh, so they which belongs to the clique right 
So now you see that uh, you it, by this procedure by the end of it you will remove all the vertices because you see uh, whenever I am removing the vertices we are sure that the the starting opening braces are before this uh, and all the uh, so the uh, we will we are not arbitrarily removing anything right. So, each point uh, will uh, corresponding to which we remove this thing we are actually removing the intervals which starts before that and ends after that and uh, because we, we get points across this thing. So, we every every vertex will be every vertex every interval will be covered by this clique. So, it is indeed a clique cover number and what we are making is indeed an independent set because we added something a closing brace and then we know that we have removed all the vertices which started before this. So, any vertex which is left starts only after that point. So, it will be in fact independent of uh, the already added vertices because that will start strictly after the last uh, end point of uh, the end point of the last interval that we added to the independent set. Therefore, we are going to get an independent set. So, we see that uh, here the we got we will indeed get a clique cover uh, whose cardinality is equal to the cardinality of the independence that we, um, we make by the end of the procedure right. So, therefore, uh, here alpha of g is equal to k of g the clique cover number that is it ok fine. So, this is uh, uh, the proof for uh, that proof that any the complement of an interval graph is also perfect. The, fi the final thing is uh, uh, a very well known class of graph called caudal graphs. So, what of what are caudal graphs? So, it is defined like this again these are also coming from uh, application because of the usefulness in practical situations. So, the caudal graph means a, uh, you consider a graph and you consider a cycle in it. Uh, suppose the cycle is of length 4 or more say this is a 5 cycle here then we should get a chord like this a chord for that right it should be it should be a chord here it should not happen that or now we see a 4 cycle here we should get one more chord here right this is a chord right. So, this is so that in other words there should not be any cycle in the graph. Uh, of length 4 or more without a chord, no cordless cycle of 4 or more should be there. So, a cycle if this is a cycle, so and uh, other than the adjacent vertices in the cycle in this order nothing else is connected it is a cordless cycle. So, a chord for this cycle will be like this for instance right this is a chord, this is a chord. So, if no chords are present then it is a cordless cycle. If we consider the vertices of the cycle and take the induced subgraph of that then if it becomes a simple cycle when you take the induced subgraph that is a cordless cycle or it is also called an induced cycle. Uh, in the perfect graph literature it is sometimes called a hall if uh, the number of uh, vertices participating in this cycle is more than 3 right. 3 cycle is a triangle it is uh, it is not a hall in fact. So, uh, so in other words we do not allow any halls uh, in caudal graphs right. So, we do not allow that. So, in other words um, any cycle of length 4 or more should have a chord or any induced cycle in the graph has to be a triangle no induced cycle of length 4 or more this is what the caudal graph is. So, it may look like uh, the definition of the caudal graphs uh, does not seem to imply uh, to to tell too much because it is not it is talking about the cycles it is talking that uh, ok there is no induced cycle of length for how how does it help us to prove that it is perfect or not perfect whatever right does it does it make any sense is it connected to the chromatic number or is it connected to the uh, clique number somehow. So, so but it so happens that the caudal graphs have so many properties just the simple looking fact that there are uh, no chord sorry there are no cycles of length 4 or more without a chord no cordless cycle of length 4 or more uh, will uh, allow us to infer a lot right about the caudal graphs. So, let us let us look at some of the immediate uh, properties 
for we have studied what are the separators. So, let us consider this uh, suppose we have a caudal graph G and we consider a minimal separator S of that. What do we mean by minimal separator? It is a collection of vertices. If you remove this set of vertices, the graph will get disconnected. That means, there will be a at least one piece here which we can call G 1 at least some piece here G 2 Maybe there are more also G 3 right. But the point is if you remove any subset of this vertex, we cannot disconnect the graph. In that sense, it is minimal that is the point right. In that sense, it is minimal. So, you cannot know proper subset of this can separate the graph. Uh, now, if we consider a minimal separator of the graph, so, so that means at least two vertices. So, because it is a minimal separator, we also know that every vertex has to be adjacent to both sides uh, by at least one vertex. Because you know if there is a vertex here, suppose this vertex was not adjacent to this side, then you could have removed this portion and it will separate uh, this part from the remaining right. This we have seen before also. Therefore, every vertex should be adjacent to vertex one vertex on both sides other, otherwise removal of that um, in fact to each component otherwise uh, a subset of that would uh, see if you that vertex which is not connected to both sides can go along with some some other components and the remaining vertices themselves can manage to uh, separate one piece from the remaining right. So, therefore, uh, so the minimal separators have this property. So, this is the minimal separator we are considering let us say without loss of generality there are this g 1 and g 2. And now, suppose it is we, we want to claim that this is the induced subgraph on this S if g is a caudal graph has to be a uh, complete graph it is it is it should be a clique. Suppose it is not a clique what can happen? So, suppose it is not a clique then see there are at least two vertices there because if it is just one one vertex it is a clique. So, and uh, moreover is it possible to have some uh, two vertices it is not a uh, not a clique right there should be two vertices such that they are, are they are not adjacent to each other. So, the let this be the two vertices which are not adjacent to each other we will mark it with red. So, yeah so two vertices. Now, we know this has a neighbor here, this has a neighbor here, this has a neighbor here, this has a neighbor here. There can be equal the neighbors, but there are some neighbors. So, what we do is here I will say um, this is x, this is y, this is a, this is b, and this is our culprit vertices u and v. Okay. Now, we can see because this is a connected component from y to x there is a shortest path, there is a path here. Similarly, a to b also there is a shortest path. When I say shortest path a and b can be equal in which case the shortest path is that a to b so the single vertex similarly here. Now, we claim that so uh, among all the neighbors of v. So, if we had considered this y to be uh, y and x to be the shortest I mean the closest such neighbors that means uh, their distance is minimized then we see that then there won't be any more edge from here to here so we we, we know that there won't be any more edge like this or like this right into the path right why but because we could have taken these two pairs as the as a shorter pair then right so so therefore we can rule out this kind of edges also because this is the shortest path there won't be any edges of this sort right this this kind of short circuits won't be there because it's indeed a short path so that won't be there and now uh, similarly so of case then x v u y such edges won't be there because in that case we could have taken x and y to be the same similarly uh, the similar things can be told about it this edges this edges this edges this edges will be will not be there similarly this kind of edges will not be there. So, this is indeed a uh, this root this one this edge u x and this shortest root here x to y and then y v and then v b and this shortest root here and then u a is indeed a uh, cordless cycle cordless cycle or induced cycle in the graph. But then here 1, 2, 3, 
4, 5, 6 vertices are there. It need not be 6 vertices. If x and y are same, then it may turn out to be something like u v x here. This is a here because a and b can be same here, right? This a, b, this x, y can happen to be the same vertices. So, this will and of case you may ask is it possible to have any uh, any chord of this sort, right? Cross chord this way. No, it is not possible because it is a separator here. It is not possible to have a chord of this sort, right? That is not possible. So, therefore, uh, it is indeed a 4 cycle. So, we infer that it is not possible to have some u and v in the minimal separator, yes, such that uh, they are non adjacent. So, every pair of vertices in the separator, minimum separator has to be adjacent, that is what we say. So, we infer that in a caudal graph, any minimal separator yes should induce a clique in a caudal graph. See note that uh, we have proved it by using the simple fact that in a caudal graph uh, we do not have induced cycle of length 4 or more. That implies this that any minimal separator S of uh, a caudal graph should induce a clique in it. That is a good thing. How does it help? So, so there is this concept of simplicial vertices which is very useful in the study of con uh, caudal graphs. So, what is a simplicial vertex? So, in a graph a vertex is called simplicial. So, this is a vertex. If you look at its neighbors, you look at its neighbors, if they form a clique, if these neighbors form a clique that means, they are all pairwise connected. So, of course, including this it will be a uh, clique which, which is one more vertices, right. Such vertices are called simplicial vertices. So, here do you see in a cycle do you see any simplicial vertex? No, definitely you do not have a simplicial vertex. That is why this, uh, so this is, there is no simplicial vertex because if you take this vertex its neighbors do not form a clique. If you take this vertex its neighbors do not form a clique. But on the other hand if you take a tree, do you see any simplicial vertice vertices? Yes, of course, if you take this leaf see here its neighbor is only one and then it is indeed a clique, right? one single turn clique or you can for instance uh, you can see a graph like this simple graph like this. So, here we have several simplicial vertices for instance if you take this vertex right. So, this is a simplicial neighbors form a clique here. So, this is a simplicial vertex because its neighbors form a clique here right. So, but uh, this is not a simplicial vertex why because its neighbors are this, this, this and this and this, this, this and this together do not form a clique. So, uh, the some graphs have simplicial vertices, some graph do not have simplicial vertices. In a given graph all vertices need not be simplicial vertices, some vertices can be. So, if all vertices are simplicial vertices, what does it mean? So, uh, so you can um, right. So, then it is you uh, in our case we are talking about uh, caudal graphs. In the caudal graph we will say that there will always be a simplicial, simplicial vertex. So, this is what we want to prove now, right. So, uh, uh, in a caudal graph uh, the property that how does it allow us that the property of not having a 4 cycle, 4, four induced cycle of length 4 or more, uh, how does it allow us to infer that there is always a simplicial vertex. So, in fact, we will prove a slightly stronger statement which is not that there exists one simplicial vertex. In fact, most of the time there will be two simplicial vertices. In fact, there will be two simplicial vertices. Uh, essentially, if uh, the caudal graph uh, is a uh, complete graph every vertex is a simplicial vertex, right is not it. Right. So, if the caudal graph is not a complete graph, we will show that all there will always two uh, 
two simplicial vertices which are not only simplicial vertices which are non neighbors in fact non adjacent uh, two vertices which are non adjacent and also simplicial such simplicial vertices will be present that is what we are going to prove now. Uh, how do we prove this thing? So, let us say to prove uh, this uh, we will consider an induction. So, for a small graph we can for one vertex graph so it is a complete graph there is nothing to prove for two vertex graph right. So, it is obvious so, so like that smaller graph we can prove it for induction for three vertex graph we can check. Now, let us say suppose you take an n vertex caudal graph. Now, for all smaller caudal graphs we know this statement that means, if it is a non complete caudal graph then there exists a pair of non adjacent vertices such that both of them are simplicial in the graph. So, now what do you do? So, this is a graph this graph is given. Uh, so, there is this two vertices u and v which are non adjacent. So, therefore, there is no. So, if two vertices are there in the graph which are non adjacent we can always find a separator for them right because it is non adjacent let us call it s right. And if there is a separator there is a minimum separator we can always uh, consider the minimum separator uh, separating u and v. So, now we have two we can consider two graphs. So, the this side of uh, s which containing u and the side of s which containing v right. So, there can be other things we can which we can uh, add to this part or the, this part. So, for instance it may not be the total number of components that we are interested. So, there are at least one more vertex here because v is here at least one more vertex other than s. Now, the question is uh, what about so, we look for uh, one uh, see this portion there is at least one vertex you know u. So, this portion you know there is at least one vertex v. So, what if we can pick up one simplicial vertex from this side and one simplicial vertex from this side. We know because uh, they are on different sides of s the separator they are going to be non adjacent. If such no, uh, simplicial vertices ex exist then indeed our uh, statement will be true right. So, but uh, is it guarantee that we will get uh, a simplicial vertex uh, in this side for instance if I consider this graph uh, is it guaranteed that on this green side I will be able to find a simplicial vertex. See we know that uh, uh, if it is a, uh, there are simplicial vertices because it is indeed a co caudal graph a smaller caudal graph we can apply the induction hypothesis. Uh, but uh, there are uh, there is a possibility that the simplicial vertex take because it is just a caudal graph together uh, it may end up here inside s right. But we know that ok fine we, we have a caudal uh, in, in simplicial vertex here, but then if it is a complete graph this happens to be complete then we could have taken any vertex we could have taken this v itself right that will be a simplicial vertex right now or uh, any other vertex on this side would have been enough. So, we can assume that this is as such not complete therefore, there are two non adjacent vertices which are simplicial in this part itself. So, if one of them is here do not worry take the other. So, and the other hap if the other happens to be here in this side we are done we got a simplicial vertex. Now, what if the other vertex out of this two non adjacent simplicial vertex is also here in fact, it, it can also happen to be here right inside the click is it possible. No, it is not possible because this is what where we are using our previous lemma because we know that this is indeed a click right this portion is indeed a click and we have this uh, uh, we have this edge. Uh, between them because it is a clique. So, but then we know that two simplicial vertices we have are non adjacent we have two non adjacent vertices which are simplicial. So, if one of them is here the other has to be outside this. So, that means it has to be somewhere inside this. So, we get one indeed we will definitely we will get one in this region. Similarly, we will get one in this region also when we consider the induction assumption on this portion. So, therefore, we will get a simplicial vertex here and sim simplicial vertex here that will mean that we have two non adjacent vertices which are simplicial uh, in the caudal graph. So, 
uh, this is a slightly stronger property than we usually need. Usually, we need only one simplicial property from simplicial vertex in a quadratic graph that would have been enough for most of the purposes. But then if you try to prove that uh, we have one simplicial vertex, we will uh, one, uh, it would be a good exercise to try uh, to prove that uh, by putting an induction hypothesis that there exists uh, for up to n minus 1 vertex quadratic graphs we have uh, a simplicial vertex, one simplicial vertex and then we try to extend the induction. Uh, uh, take the induction forward, you will find it a lit little difficult. This idea that uh, we are we are strengthening the induction hypothesis uh, by saying that we have two uh, 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 simplicial vertices which are non-adjacent helps us to take forward because that is strengthening of the induction hypothesis which helps us to push it fast uh, easier, right. So, there are some uh, we had studied a classic example of uh, uh, such strengthening of the induction hypothesis to prove the theorem when we considered uh, the 5 choosability of uh, planar graphs, right. How in that proof also it was by a clever strengthening of the uh, induction hypothesis that we managed rather than we what we put is inductively we assume what is more than required because we just wanted to prove that the planar graphs of 5 choosable, we assume something much more uh, stronger and then proved it. Because when you uh, strengthen the induction hypothesis, it so happens uh, that we have more uh, things to use, right, that helps us. But uh, we, we have to uh, manipulate it very caref carefully. This is another such nice example. So, so this is also much easier, therefore, you can, uh, you should try doing the other way and try to make it work without the strengthening and see uh, it appreciate uh, such a thing, such a technique. And now, um, so we know that uh, this simplicial vertex is always available in a caudal graph. This gives rise to the idea of perfect elimination ordering, it's perfect, this is what perfect, perfect elimination ordering in a caudal graph. So, it is called what is a perfect elimination ordering. Uh, so, also it is called PEO as a short form PEO, right, perfect elimination ordering. The perfect elimination ordering is a sequencing of vertices in the following way. So, first vertex V1 will be a simplicial vertex of the caudal graph. Now, you remove V1 from the graph and then uh, we consider because we get a smaller caudal graph because all induced subgraph of the caudal graph is again a caudal graph. So, we pick up V2 such that V2 is simplicial vertex in the remaining graph and V3 is picked up after removing V2, V1 and V2 in this uh, caudal graph that remains. Uh, it will be a caudal graph because induced subgraphs are always caudal. So, we pick up the simplicial, we pick up a simplicial vertex V3 and so on up until Vn. Every time we will get a simplicial vertex because in a caudal graph there is always a simplicial vertex. So, such an ordering is of vertices is called a uh, perfect elimination ordering. The property of this perfect elimination ordering is that if you, if you write down V1, V2 up to Vn and then look at Vi, the ith vertex and you look at the neighbors of Vi which are higher numbered than that means, if V i is here, we look at the neighbors which are higher numbered than V i. Yeah. So, those what will you see on the neighborhood? Of course, because V i is a simplicial vertex in the uh, in the induced subgraph on V i, V i plus 1 to up to V, I, v n. So, therefore, this is going to be a clique, right? That is the special thing. So, it is it's very much like when we considered the degeneracy or colouring number or anything, but here the property that we are looking is not that the higher numbered neighbours are small, but we are saying that the higher numbered neighbours will induce a clique. That means, V i will be a simplicial vertex in the graph induced by uh, uh, V i, V i plus 1, V i plus 2 up to V n in the in the induced subgraph on the higher numbered higher or equal numbered vertices. 
So, such an ordering is called perfect elimination ordering. So, in a caudal graph as you can see a perfect elimination ordering is always available as, as is obvious because in any caudal graph there is a simply shell vertex remove it. The remaining graph is again caudal because the induced subgraph of a caudal graph is caudal we get another perf, uh, simply shell vertex and this uh, sequence of elimination that will be a perfect elimination ordering. And now it is not very difficult to show that this is also a characterization of the caudal graph this is a ca characterization of the caudal graph. So, uh, I will leave it to you to uh, leave it to you to prove that if a graph has a perfect elimination ordering it has to be a caudal graph. So, so that uh, um, yeah it will have it will uh, uh, yeah it will turn out to be a caudal graph it is not possible for any other graph any if a graph is not caudal it is not possible to get a uh, perfect elimination ordering. I will leave it to you to uh, verify that. So, now we will go back to our uh, main aim. So, this was all uh, told in order to uh, study the caudal graphs and get some ideas about the caudal graph, but then these theorems will also help us to prove that uh, the caudal graphs are indeed perfect graphs. How do we show that? Uh, see to show that uh, the caudal graphs are perfect graphs again we know we need not worry about the condition on induced subgraph because an induced subgraph of a caudal graph is again a caudal graph and therefore if I simply prove that for any caudal graph G chi of G is equal to omega of G for induced subgraph also the property will hold right. So, uh, to show that a caudal graph is perfect we just have to prove that the caudal graph for caudal graph the chromatic number is equal to the clique number. How do we show that? As usual since chromatic number is uh, in general greater than or equal to omega we just have to show a coloring uh, of the given caudal graph using number of colors equal to the chromatic as uh, a clique number or number of colors equal to some clique the size of some clique that is enough because uh, the chromatic number it is if the color number of colors used is only equal to the cardinality of some clique it has to be the maximum clique because if there is a bigger clique then we could not have done it right because that bigger clique would not have allowed uh, a coloring of the graph using a lesser number of colors. So, it is enough to show that uh, the uh, number of colors used is we show a coloring with the, the number of co colors used equal to the number of vertices in some clique that is what we are going to do. We will use uh, uh, the notion of uh, perfect elimination orderings to do this thing. So, we will consider a perfect elimination ordering of the caudal graph say v, v1, v2, v3, v4 so on up to vn and then uh, we first uh, color vn rather than coloring v1 we will color first vn uh, give a color. So, the same greedy strategy uh, like we did for interval graphs we will use here. In fact, essentially that idea of the interval graph is being extended here. So, V 1 will be given color number 1 say one color and V n minus 1 will be given the color if it will see whether it is V n is a neighbor of not if it uh, then we will use the second color and uh, in general when I am coloring V i after coloring uh, all the higher numbered vertices vi plus 1, vi plus 2 up to vn suppose I have colored and we consider vi. What I do is I consider it is neighbors which are already colored that means neighbors which are higher numbered than this and then see the colors which are already taken up by its neighbors and then you say color which is available which is uh, the lowest color available from uh, the pool. That means, if some color is unused then uh, among the unused colors we will use the smallest. If no color is available up to now among the pool which is up to now used then we have to go for the new color that is again greedy, same greedy strategy we are using. The only thing we have to show is the number of colors used is only equal to the cardinality of some clique. How do we show that? Suppose k as usual k be the uh, the highest number of colors used. So, there is a place there is some time when the k appeared for the first time right. So, suppose this v i ith vertex used k color the color number k for the first time that is the largest color we have used. So, now look at its uh, higher numbered uh, neighbors. So, what do you see because higher numbered neighbors because it is a simply shell vertex in that graph. So, you see this is going to be a clique right this is going to be a clique and this is going to be a clique. Now, uh, 
so uh, k colors are used of case the k if I had to use the kth color that means all the colors below it 1, 2, 3 up to k minus 1 all of them are already used up by the num neighbors of this thing that means exactly k minus 1 uh, higher neighbors are there here right. So, otherwise how can they use up all the colors. Uh, the, the, so, now this neighbors form a clique and uh, this if you add to it you will get a k clique right. So, you have demonstrated a k clique. Uh, where k is the maximum number of color used, the maximum color used. So, therefore, we see that chromatic number of this graph is equal to k equal to uh, the cardinality of this clique, which essentially means that it has to be the cardinality of the maximum clique, right, because there cannot be a bigger clique and in that case we could not have colored with k colors, right. So, it happens that uh, for the caudal graph chromatic number uh, is equal to the clique number as we want. So, therefore, caudal graphs are perfect. Now, the final thing we want to verify is whether the complement of caudal graphs is perfect of perfect or not. So, uh, the same same strategy. So, we just have to figure out uh, whether uh, the what is the so called co caudal graphs, the complement of a caudal graph. So, given G be a co caudal graph. Now, G bar is a caudal graph. So, what do we have to show? To show that so, again if it is a co caudal graph induced subgraph is not a problem because they will again be a co caudal graph. Uh, therefore, we just have to prove that for a given caudal any co caudal graph the chromatic number is equal to the uh, clique number. So, that will amount to showing that in a caudal graph the clique cover number is equal to uh, the clique cover number is equal to the um, largest independence set size that means the independence number the stability number. So, the as we did in the in the case of interval graphs we will do the same technique here. So, what we do is we start from a simplicial vertex we take a simplicial vertex v 1 and then uh, we will uh, remove. So, we will add v 1 the simplicial vertex to the uh, independent set that we are creating we will we will collect some independent uh, create an independent set by adding vertices 1 by 1 to it. And then along uh, side we will collect some cliques uh, and by the end of this procedure we will show that what the cliques we have collected is forming a clique cover number and the vertices we have collected is an independent set and uh, their cardinality is same. So, we have a clique cover uh, whose cardinality the number of cliques in it is equal to the cardinality of the independent set size. Uh, so, some independent set size that is enough therefore, the clique cover number has to be strictly greater than, greater than or equal to the maximum independent set size right. So, this has to be a maximum independent set and that has to be a clique, minimum clique cover then. So, that will that will prove the same thing as we are repeating the 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 argument that we have done for the last uh, the interval graphs or uh, many of the earlier cases here. But here slight technique is slightly generalized from the interval graph. We are just uh, picking up a simplicial vertex first and adding it to the this thing. And then what we do we look at because it is a simplicial vertex its neighborhood forms a clique. We remove all the uh, neighbors along with that vertex that together will form this its neighbors and itself that simplicial vertex will form a clique in the, the first clique in the clique cover number. Now, in the remaining graph it is again a caudal graph we again have a simplicial vertex we can uh, we collect the vertex and its neighbors and add the second clique to the uh, clique cover uh, we are creating and uh, this vertex itself can go to the independent set right we are going to create. See this new vertex I am adding and the, this v 1 and this say v 1 uh, v 2. Uh, will not be adjacent because you have already removed all the neighbors of v 1. So, this v 2 will not be a neighbor of that. So, therefore, v 1 and v 2 are whatever I am going to add to the set s is going to be independent. Every time I am adding a vertex to that I am removing all its neighbors. So, what I collect there is going to be an independent set is very clear. Now, on the other hand similarly every time I am collecting uh, the neighborhood of my vertex uh, uh, is a clique and the, along with the vertex it is forming a clique and uh, by the time I finish of all the vertices I have color co and covered all the vertices because I am removing from the graph only 
the vertices which go along uh, go inside some clique because I am always when I am removing I am making sure that I am removing a clique. So, therefore, I have this k 1, k 2, k 3 etcetera uh, covering the entire vertex set of the graph. So, it is indeed a clique cover of the graph and the number of cliques that we have collected here is indeed equal to the the number of vertices I have collected in the independent set. So, this s and this uh, is equal and then which means that uh, this clique cover this is a clique cover number is indeed the minimum because it is it is equaling the cardinality of an independent set right. And this s has to be a maximum independent set because it is equaling the cardinality of some clique cover right. So, they are both uh, uh, minimum clique cover and the maximum independent set. So, we, sh we have shown that in the caudal graph the maximum independent set size is indeed the clique cover number which essentially means that in the co caudal graph the clique number the maximum clique cardinality size is equal to the chromatic number. So, co caudal graphs are also perfect graphs. So, we have uh, uh, considered several uh, subclasses of perfect graphs now. That means several well-known graph classes and they complement. So, in short, that not only the graph class, also the complement class is also perfect. So, th this essentially is a common theme, common uh, property for all perfect graphs. That means if a graph is perfect, its complement is also perfect. We will give a proof for this theorem in the next class, and we will explain uh, it a little further. How we can understand it better right in a, the general point of view. How we discussed all these things this this many several uh, this many classes of perfect graph is to uh, illustrate that there are several important classes of graphs which are indeed perfect. So, we will continue with perfect graphs in the next class. Thank you.